Welcome to Talking with Coach Eric Bendick today. He's a local guru, um, local guy, Charleston guy, um, coming to you from the clinic here, Progressive Physical Therapy. Just wanted to take a moment and talk with Coach about his history and, and kind of catch up on the football team and how it's grown over there at Phillips Simmons High School over the last couple of years, right? It's, Absolutely. Is this year three for you guys? Year three coming up. Okay. Year three coming up. Um, just tell us a little bit about yourself and like how you were brought up. You know, give us some background on you and, and how maybe that influences you today as a coach. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was raised in Mount Pleasant. Um, I grew up in uh, Snee Farm when uh, Mount Pleasant wasn't very big, you know, as it is now. Yeah. Snee Farm was the uh, kind of the outskirts of town. Um, my parents, you know, they divorced when I was in fourth grade. My mom, you know, pretty much raised me. Um, you know, hardworking lady, you know, just not a lot of frills about growing up, you know, at that time, you know, we didn't have a lot. Uh, she was just, you know, one of the hardest workers, always just, you know, one or two jobs, you know, just constantly just, you know, providing for us, not really taking much for herself. Solid backbone kind of woman. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, she, you know, just, she was loving, she was great, but she just, I mean, she had, you know, once, once they split, she just had to kind of take over both roles and mm -hmm. she was a tough, she is still a tough lady. Um, <laughs> You so, put her in your lineup every day of the she week. Is, yeah. She's hard nosed. Um, she was raised just to work. I mean, that was it. You know, nothing crazy. Respect, you know, uh, how you're raised and respect, you know, your family, but, you know, work for everything you got. Yep. And then I grew into uh, high school level and I went to um, Wando High School and Coach Hayes, Ron Bob Hayes, who's still there. He was the head football coach when I was there. Okay. And he was just, I mean, you talk about a guy that's just blue collar. And I mean, he was always working and he was always, you know, showing you the right way to do things and showing he that's where the win the day mantra came around. He was the kind of the one to first give me, um, instill that into, uh, into me. And then I've seen it, you know, at other places, but that was kind of where I really go back to with that, with that idea. Um, but he was also a guy that just, you know, he loved his players and he showed you what it was to, you know, to care for a person, but also be hard on them. I mean, you know, just demand as much as you can out of them. Oh, yeah. But love them at the same time. you got to push an athlete. They, they, they right. expect it. They yeah. need it. I mean, we all need direction, yeah. right? I mean, and he's that way. He still is to this day. I mean, he's still a big part of my life. And he was just that guy that always, you know, he drove me to my college visits. He he was around, you know, and, and stepped into a fatherhood rules. So, it was, you know, just it was a great to see that. So, I think I started to see a lot of those types of coaches. Now, I had a great football coach. Four coaches and Dickie Dangle, who's also he's at Somerville. I worked for John McKissick. So, and I had these really, really good guys that were my head coaches and coached me. But um, Coach Hayes kind of finished it out, and then I carried over into a lot of still talk to him, you know, once a week at least. And, um, he's just an you know, influence that got me, I think, into coaching. Well, you know, if I look back on him, I think he's where it got me into coaching. The guys that he had on staff were really good friends of mine, and, and he was that guy that really pushed me into coaching. Yeah. Um, now, it took me a little while after, not a while after, it took me a year after college to figure that out. But I always knew I wanted to coach. And uh, that was, he was the one who kind of instilled that in me. Like, you know, you can be 100% you know, hard nosed and demanding and, and, and ask for a lot out of your players, but you can't, you can't do it if you don't show them that you care. So I've always learned that. Like, he was tough. You know, he didn't, oh, he didn't yeah. smile a lot. He didn't do a lot of things that were like, you know, uh, that were going to get you, uh, you know, not a lot of people on Twitter. He wouldn't be the flashiest coach on Twitter or anything like that. You know, he wasn't doing anything like that, but he was, he cared. You could tell he cared. That's great, man. I mean, you can look back across history yeah. and find men and women like that. It just yeah. inspire all of us. That's all. I mean, yeah. and that's great, you know, because yeah. you've got that as, as basically your framework now as a coach, correct? Right. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We're tough. You know, we're, we're, we're trying to be tough and we demand a lot, but I know that we got to give back. I mean, we have to give back to these kids because they don't need care. They don't, they don't care. Oh, yeah. 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 A coach invested, gets right. the best out of his players, yeah. 100 always. And we yeah. do the same, you know, with physical therapy. Yeah. Someone buys into, like, like this is your goal in life, you know. Uh, what, are you, what are you driving your, your, your rehab towards? Yeah. And it's the same concept. Their investment at that point is, like, 10 out of 10, mm -hmm. you know, whereas if, if they don't have a mission, they don't have a goal, if they're not trying to win something, right. you know, they sit there to fumble. So, right. So you created a winning environment. Right. Uh, you, you gotta create the direction for them. Like you put your plan in place. If you come in here and, and, they, and they, you don't, they don't trust that you have an idea of where they're gonna end up or where you want them to end up. Yeah, they're not. They're not you know, it, it's not as clear of a directive and a mission. It's not gonna, not gonna be as successful. Goals, man. Gotta have goals. Absolutely. So tell me about um, and everybody else is listening. Tell us about 
Um, Philip Simmons High School. It's it's a brand new school. Yep. It's a beautiful school. Lots of incredible technology. Right. I mean, the, the one thing I was floored was that the chemistry tables like just yeah. stood up for <laughs> yeah. you. You know, when you were in your lab and sit back down in <laughs> this class now. Um, but so so tell us about starting up. I know you worked um, as assistant athletic director, right? And uh, and also head football coach over there in, in bringing the program up to where it is now. Tell right. me about like what all it's taken to get to that step and and the process of yeah what's wild because there's no blueprint they give you when you when you start out i mean <laughs> the, you know the closest thing they had to a blueprint was when they opened up cane bay high school in berkeley county uh at that time it was 12 years before we started so i mean if you just look at just little things monetarily that the time value of money over 12 years the things that we were looking to purchase to try to stay relevant to the schools that were being built in any aspect of it, like you were saying with chemistry tables or with athletic equipment or whatever, you can just tell that money was going to be different. I mean, it was going to, things were going to cost it. You know? um, so we didn't have a blueprint per se, but we had an idea in place of what we want a school to look like. And what you said exactly was uh, technology, student center, everything we did, we wanted to make sure that we were first class. Everything that we did, we wanted to be a hundred percent. One of the biggest things that we were, you know, we were, trying to make sure we did. I think we did a good job. We still have a little bit to do is branding. I mean, we wanted the kids to know because it was such a new thing in, in this area. There was no high school. Oh yeah. There was no it's school for um, 20, I think it was 22 years. That's the last school that was you know, where these guys would go to or you know, where these kids would go to, um, Cane Boy High School. Um, so we wanted to brand and make sure they knew it was theirs. So everything we did football wise, everything we did athletics wise, we tried to throw the logo on it. You know, just make sure that those kids saw it every day. That's what they were playing for. We weren't, you know, this school coming together and this school coming together. We weren't, you know, we were one school. Um, and I think we did that throughout the entire school. Um, you know, we wanted to make the art room as nice as we could. We wanted to make the band room as nice as we could. We wanted to make all these places as nice as we could. Athletic, the, the athletic training facilities, you know, everything that we can make as first class and top notch and relevant in today's society as we could. Um, but the thing was is that not only was there no blueprint, there really wasn't, you know, they don't give you the budget that you can go under because I think they want you to try to find a way to cut the cost as much as you can. So <laughs> they say no a lot. And they say no a lot. Sure. Like, hey, you know, you throw something at them, they're like, nah, it's way too much. And, and, and then you wonder, like, well, what's not too much? They want you to kind of figure that out on your own. They, you know, they, they're not going to give you $100,000 because then you're going to spend $100,000. I bet, so. I bet you, <laughs> like everybody else, will look at that football program yeah. and say, this is my Christmas list. Yeah. And I'm going to get maybe seven out of ten. Absolutely. But what are my most important right. things? So what did you focus on as far as the football and, and the facilities yeah. around football? Um, one of the great things about it is a lot of the big ticket items, like and, and the things that come with safety, they, they took care of first. And that was out of the capital budget, the capital, like, you know, the, the, I would probably imagine the tax paying budget, the helmets and the shoulder pads, the things that were, you're not going to, you're not going to skimp on costs. You're going to go out and you're going to make sure that you buy the five star helmet and the, and the pads that are, Gonna protect the sure, body equipment. Right. So that was something I didn't have to, to worry about. As as a guy that was out there purchasing, they they contracted with the company um, Shut Sports and, and and they got all the stuff for us. So that right. ended up being you know great. But we decided to um, brand with Under Armour. That was a big thing for us. We wanted to go out and we wanted to have one brand. We didn't want to see Nike and Adidas and and, and you know, New mm-hmm. Balance and all these different things. We want to have one brand. And Under Armour kind of offered the best um, startup for us and. So that was a big thing. When we talked about our brand, we want to have a brand that the kids can rally around. So yeah, they're probably um, real stoked about that too. Right. right, and then you know anything that we have that we see out on, um, you know, a game field or uh, you know in the weight room or something like that, that they're going to get a lot of uh, you know that they're going to be mm-hmm. around a lot of people. We try to make sure we're on all the way. Um, now everything else, I tried to make sure that we were buying stuff that could last, that had good longevity. And stuff that the kids would embrace and, and, and feel like we've invested a lot in. So whether it was the weight room, we go out and make sure that we got the nicest stuff for all sports, not just football. Um, for football, I want them to have a, a uniform look. So everything we do, we we give to them and take back up and, and wash and, and take care of. So if they're working out, they wear a pair of shorts and shirts that that we've you know that are really nice, but yeah. we make sure that everybody's uniform has the same stuff to where the kids don't have to really put a lot of money of their own into it because as you, I mean, as I grew up and other people grow up, not everybody can purchase the nicest set of cleats. Yeah. Not everybody can purchase the, you know, their own, you know, leggings and sleeves and all this stuff that you can wear now. So really one of my initiatives was I want to cover everything that the kids would wear that was going to be, um, 
vital for them to be successful. And we would take care of it as coaches. We would wash it. We would store it. We would inventory it. But I wanted to make sure that nobody really had to come in and have anything really more than clothes on your back. Um, yeah. And that, yeah. was, that was huge for me with when we started. That's incredible. And yeah. um, once again, going back to the community, man, that's just one more way that you can impress that right. on your, your team. That, you know, I rally for you. You know, this whole yeah. program rallies around the fact that we're going to try to take care yeah. of you. That. And, and there's a meal aspect to your training, too. Yeah. Right? You guys eat before and after practice, I assume? We try to. Uh, so in the in July, in June and July, um, the district, which is a great program, they feed anybody that's kindergarten through age 18. Awesome. Um, breakfast and lunch. And it's, I mean, it's free. The kids can go in there. So we plan our trainings in the summertime around that because I can't. Um, I can't stress the nutrition to them enough because sleep and nutrition are two of the biggest, you know, people ask me all the time in my, in, you know, my line of work, like what supplements are you taking? Two big supplements. We tell them is sleep and nutrition. Just make sure you're doing a better oh, job with it. You know, yeah, yeah I got to, I mean, I got to do a better job myself. <laughs> sleep, <laughs> you know, sleep and nutrition. All that. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, but then we have this group of moms and it doesn't have to be moms. It can be aunts. It can be grandmothers. It's just this, this women's group that, that has embraced our, uh, our uh, team and they feed us whatever we eat. And then if you, if you do, if you, how great the school treats us, how great these moms treat us. And then there's um King's cross church, which is down the road here. Yeah. They literally anything that we need food wise, or even just like anything we need, just need. I mean, they're just great. And they are 100% in of helping us out and feeding the kids or, or clothing, you know, clothing or, you know, camps for uh, for them in the summertime. So they've been awesome to us. And so if you just put all those three groups together, we rarely worry for much, you know, food-wise. And it doesn't come out of, like, our kids' pockets. It doesn't come out of my pocket. Um, so that's great. It's a great aspect for us. One of the best things, I think, that Philip Simmons, as an observer yeah. on the outside of the program, right, <clears throat> is that we've noticed that the community presence, it, it's a, it essentially is a family. And that, that in any environment, is going to be a success story. Yeah. 